One of the most common and daunting challenges for orthodontists is correcting skeletal class II malocclusions. Headgear, elastics, and other devices can help you treat class II cases. But with Advanced Sync 2, you can simultaneously advance the mandible while correcting malocclusions, combining two distinct treatment phases. The reason is simple. Advanced Sync 2 offers an evolution in Herbst treatment. Designed to advance the mandible to a class I position, in as little as six to nine months, while the patient is bonded upper and lower five to five. Here's how it works. Remove separators between teeth to seat crowns. Fit crowns on teeth one at a time and then remove to prevent aspiration. Checking the size and length of the crowns. The clinician should document any large restorations on the teeth that are receiving crowns, as the crowns may need to be partially cut at the end of class two correction. Crowns should slide over the teeth with some resistance and slide down on the occlusal surface without pinching or blanching the soft gingival tissue. If the crown is too long, you'll need to shorten it so that it doesn't impinge on the tissue. Once you shorten a crown, you'll need to crimp it around the gingival edges with a how plier to tighten the crown so it snaps over the tooth. Once the crown has reached approximately three-fourths of its seating position with thumb pressure, use a bite stick to complete seating. A band removing plier will aid in removing the crown from the tooth. Dry appliance and all components thoroughly. While not required, additional screw retention may be achieved by dipping the screw for the upper assembly in Sikabond. Align the upper tube's lumen with the casing on the maxillary crown and secure the screw. This is an important procedure, and if used, the Sikabond can help prevent the screws from coming loose during treatment. Once the screw is tightened, give it one additional turn to assure tightness. It's easier to place screws in the upper mechanism before cementation. Place toothpaste in any open areas of the appliance's components. This includes upper tubes, upper and lower arch wire slots, and both axles. Avoid getting toothpaste inside the crowns as it may contaminate the cement and weaken the bond. Mix the cement and place it in the crowns. Crowns should be one half to two thirds full with cement. It's best to use a cold slab when mixing the cement. A glass ionomer or dual cure light activated adhesive is recommended. Cement the lower crowns and then cement the upper crowns with the pre-attached mechanism. Clean residual cement from the teeth using a cotton roll. Use a bite stick to assure crown is completely seated and cure cement according to manufacturer's specifications. Cement both of the lower crowns first and then bond the upper crowns once the rods are in place. Figure eight lace the upper arch wire prior to insertion. Place the lower arch wire before attaching the mechanism to the lower crown. Then, draw the lower telescoping mechanism forward and align it with the lower mesial casing. Insert a screw through the lumen into the lower mesial casing. At the initial insertion, the patient may be advanced edge to edge or to a class one relationship. It is sometimes necessary to use C-spacers of different sizes on each side, adding a millimeter or two to one side to correct any midline discrepancy. Advanced Sync uses C-spacers specifically developed for this mechanism. If C-spacers or C-rings from other manufacturers are used, they will jam the mechanism and may damage the telescoping rods. The telescoping rods do not need to be disengaged in order to place the C-spacers. Simply have patient open his or her mouth, place C-spacers over the rod, then crimp with the Ormco C-spacer crimping plier. The C-spacers will slide up and down the rod. Subsequent advancement should be scheduled every six to 12 weeks in accordance with the individual treatment plans or as determined by the doctor. Additional activation typically occurs in two to four millimeter increments. If additional activation is needed after C-spacers have been utilized to their full potential, the lower distal or upper mesial screw casing can be used for further activation. At each activation appointment, it's important to check to see that the telescope is functioning correctly and the midlines are in their correct relation. When it's time to remove the appliance, you will first remove the upper and lower arch wires. Then remove the mandibular screws from the crowns. If desired, 
You may also remove the maxillary screws and the mechanisms from the crowns. Place a topical anesthetic on the gingival tissue in the areas where the crowns will be removed. To aid in removal of the crowns, we recommend using an 1171 or 557 burr with high-speed handpiece to cut both the upper and lower crowns. The following cuts should be made along the occlusal edge of the distal buckle, distal lingual, and mesial lingual line angles. Cut the mesial buckle from the occlusal edge, subgingivally. Then cut 2 to 4 millimeters along the middle occlusal of the screw casing. After cutting the crowns, place the tip of the crown removal pliers on the occlusal surface of the crown and slide the lower level under the attachments on the buckle surface of the crown. Apply pressure and the crown will snap off. Ormco's unique partnership with AOA Lab gives you the ultimate flexibility to meet your specific patient and practice needs. You can order the Advanced Sync 2 10 patient kit and components from your local Ormco representative or by calling Ormco directly. You may also order fully customized Advanced Sync 2 appliances designed to fit your specific preferences and needs by contacting AOA Lab. For more information on Advanced Sync 2, patient marketing materials, PC training, and other support materials, visit marketing.ormco.com. On-demand and live product support webinars can be viewed 24-7 at ormcolearning.com.